Okay, I'm ready. Here we go. Oh. 1375. Hello everyone, this is Jeff of Tal Flater Mouse. Last week we tested the Brennecke Super Sabo, an interesting uh, non-lead slug made for rifled barrels only. Now the testing did not go very well. Out of 14 shots, 13 were failures. Now the rifling should have given them a spin like a bullet and allowed them to fly straight through the air, but instead they were all tumbling through the air. Now the Sabo, which is made out of plastic, was getting destroyed, so therefore we were never engaging the rifling to get a spin. Finally, we got one to function properly. Just one though, the slug had good spin, good stability and good accuracy and the plastic sabo was not destroyed this time now we did our tests at 92 degrees fahrenheit which we wouldn't consider to be an extremely hot day we went as far as soaking the bases of the shells in ice water we were thinking because these were manufactured in europe with european powder maybe 92 degrees is kind of hot for this type of powder and it was causing pressure spikes now a lot of viewers speculated that these could be old shells, but looking at the wad, there's no yellowing, discoloring, or anything. It's very fresh looking. And these were sent directly to OG from Brennecke USA. The recovered Sabo or wad uh, is still very pliable, flexible, so don't have any problems with brittle plastic. A lot of viewers suggested that we try to reload these. Fortunately, we had four left over from the test, so that's what we're gonna do. Now I decided to reach out to a friend of mine named Leon Guthrie. He runs the Buck and Slug Reloaders Facebook group and also the YouTube channel by the same name. I wanted Leon's opinion on what powder load to use, what type of powder, how much to use and all that. Not just for 92 degrees, but above that too. After all, it's my belief that all ammo should function in all weather conditions all the time. Now I'll show you how we re-engineered these shells in hopes that they'll work a little better in higher temperatures. I will have to reuse the Sabo section of the wad. It was designed specifically for this slug. But I will cut off and remove the cushion and gas seal from the wad. Our new gas seal will be an X12X gas seal. On top of that, we'll put a quarter inch tall hard fiber wad, which will give us really good support against the Sabo. And it also keeps everything the same height as the original setup. And while I have these apart, I may as well paint some lines on the bases so we could see if they're rotating or how fast they're rotating on the high speed camera. Now Leon suggested I use 28 or 29 grains of long shot. We'll just go with 30 and make it even, right? We'll load up two shells with long shot. Leon also suggested I use a powder called steel, 35 grains of it. Steel is normally used for steel shot ammo and really heavy loads of it, like two ounces or more. So this one kind of surprised me, but we'll try it. Now this is what 30 grains of steel looks like. And this is what 30 grains of long shot looks like. And this is why we weigh the powder instead of using a certain volume. And remember, we're using 35 grains of steel, so we had to actually switch to a larger size hole, a three inch hole, instead of a two and three quarter, just to fit all that bulky powder in. Now all four of these shells will use our new gas seal system. The shell on the left will be using the original Brennecke powder, that green stuff. The two shells in the middle will be using long shot and then the three inch shell on the right will be using steel had we not used the three inch hole for the steel the tip of that slug would have protruded well past the roll crimp and i doubt we could have even put much of a roll crimp on that either you don't want the tip extending past the roll crimp for safety reasons because that tip can act like a firing pin if you load it into a tube fed magazine because that tip comes in direct contact with the primer of the shell ahead of it Apparently a company called Blackwater with their heavy hitter slug didn't understand this concept and sold a lot of ammo with the tip sticking out beyond the roll crimp. Now they did issue a recall but it was a little too late because there were documented accidents such as this one. This gentleman contacted me and sent photographic proof of his accident. When he shot the gun, five of the shells in the tube magazine all detonated from a chain fire. His left hand was severely damaged 
a large piece of shrapnel hit him in the shoulder and he is now permanently deaf. This all could have been prevented if they had just used the proper size shell. Whether you're using factory ammo, which you think you could trust, or your own hand loads, please remember this basic concept so it doesn't happen again. Welcome back, Tough Later, folks, to part two of the uh, Brennicke Super Sabos. Last week we showed you these things shot in 92 degree heat. Uh, they didn't perform all that well. Go back and watch that video if you haven't already seen it because we have re-engineered these. Jeff uh, rebuilt these things using some different powders and uh, instead of bringing out cooler conditions to see if these would work better, he decided to wait around and drag me out here to hotter conditions. Today is 106 degrees. I just stepped into the sun for a minute to do this video. 106 degrees. We're going to see how these perform now with their uh, rebuilt parts and uh, see if they fly any better. See if we can keep them level and from going all over the place. So we've got a rifled barrel only. We decided that the smooth barrel was uh, not helping us in, at all in our test. So we're going to chronograph these for you and send them out of a rifled barrel downrange. We've only got four of these things and then we're going to test it against a standard American slug to see if there's any difference uh, in a commercially available US made slug. Let's give it a try. Okay, uh, target is about uh, less than 20 yards away. We're, the first one is, is the one using long shot. At the label. Okay, gotcha. I'm ready. Here we go. Got an error, it looks like, on the chrono. That doesn't surprise me. Here we go. Oh, boy. I'm going to aim for the junction right in the center between the first floor and the second floor. Gotcha. I'm ready. I'm ready. Here we go. Oh, we killed something in there. Now, it should be noted that we made no attempt to try to cool these shells down. Now, we see some plastic de debris passing by the camera there. And there's the slug with a very, very anemic spin. Now in real time, it looked really promising. It hit directly where Greg was aiming. And there's the Sabo with a couple petals missing. Now let's see how the other shot looks, which also use long shot. Now even though these shells were loaded exactly the same way, this one functioned perfectly. Now had I used 29 grains of long shot, we would have gotten to the stock velocity of around 1400 feet per second. Now we can actually see the gas seal the Sabo and the fiber wad as well as the slug which is spinning properly this time and was very accurate. It hit exactly where Greg was aiming. Now we're already doing better than our last test. This time half of them are working instead of one out of 14. What do the British call watermelon? I don't know. <laughs> okay, now with the steel I, I never would have thought of using steel, but Leon seems to think it's going to work. All right, Leon. Hold on. And Bernard. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Here we go. Oh. 1375. Yeah. A little slower. Worked fine. Oh. 1375. I gotta say, Leon knows his stuff. I never would have even tried steel power without him recommending it. We had excellent spin, therefore we had good stability. Accuracy was decent. The Sabo itself was intact and in perfect condition. Everything worked well in this shot. Thank you, Leon, for your suggestions. The original powder load, but with a modified wad. Ooh, so the mod wad. Yeah. Brandon's down, down range, be helmeted, waiting for us. Yep, bulletproof helmet, they oh, call it. Really? Oh, yep, let's, I'm ready. Here we go, let's see about that bulletproof. 1923. Wow, oh. that bulletproof. In 106 degree ambient air temperature, we got 1923 feet per second using this stock powder. I think we have a problem here. Now if that reading is accurate, that's over 500 feet per second faster than the muzzle velocity these are rated for. And to get a 1 and 1 8 ounce slug to that kind of velocity is going to take some 
dangerously high chamber pressures. The spent shell was stuck in the chamber. We had to knock it out with an aluminum rod and the primer also showed some serious overpressure signs. Now I would show that to you if I knew where it went. I think it just got thrown away by accident. But it would be an understatement to say that this European powder is heat sensitive. All right, we have our Remington AccuTip, standard old US made hunting slug. And I think it is the, it, has, <coughs> it holds the gold standard, you know? And we will be doing a video on these. When it gets cooler and we don't have to, you know, worry about high temperatures or, or get heat stroke or anything like that. Yeah, I can barely breathe out here. Um, Downrange, Brandon is wearing a, a can of tomato sauce on his head. <laughs> and we just want to prove that a, a ammo made in the USA is probably designed to work in all uh, climates of the USA. Yeah. So we'll uh, we'll see what it does. Wow. Sixteen seventy-eight. Wow, 1678. Yeah, that was probably accurate reading. Yeah. Now we did get about 170 feet per second slower velocity than what it was stated on the box, but I am not complaining. That slug functioned very well in this very hot conditions, 106 degrees Fahrenheit. You see, it is possible to manufacture ammo for all weather conditions. I think it's completely unacceptable to market a slug to be sold in the United States that only functions in the winter time, maybe? Maybe? I think we tried everything in the book to make the Brennecke Super Sabo function in hot weather, and we were only 50% successful this time. It was still a lot better than the stock setup, but 50% is still unacceptable. Now it's possible with the supply chain issues that we're all encountering, the quality in this lot is just not up to par. The plastic is just too soft or something. There's something about it that makes it fail. And to be fair, other people using the Super Sabo have had very good luck with this round. Leon shot at one wild boar. It went clean through the heart, clean through the boar, and hit a second boar standing behind it right between the eyes and killed the second boar. And that's a true story, folks. Enough of that chit chat, and let's see what happens, y'all. And I might add that both Leon and Tools and Target both shot these at about 90 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so what did we learn out here? I don't know. Do you have to learn something every time? The Brennekes performed better this time. With Jeff's uh, re-engineering. It was still a 50-50 shot, it, but it was yeah. better than, than... Yeah, we got two out of four of them to work. That's almost half. Yeah. And uh, Brandon was not too impressed with our final shot. but I uh, was impressed with your shooting and the, the, the performance of that damn thing. Yeah, so the AccuTip, uh, that thing worked great. But um, the Brennekes, yeah, still, still a little hit and miss on those. We're going to try and figure out why those things are I'm, so... Uh, I'm, now I'm thinking it's not, it wasn't just the gas seal, but the entire wad itself. Yeah. And again, Brennecke on the box printing a group of, or, or claiming a group of five inches at 100 yards, don't exactly know how we would ever get that out here. Those things, most of them were tumbling. Uh, so. If they if they function properly, it's possible, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah if they function right, so... Yeah. Anyway, it's pretty hot. We're gonna find somewhere cooler, like a furnace and uh, wrap this one up for you guys. Appreciate you stopping by. And, uh, and thank you, Greg, for coming out here. I mean, 105, well, you know, it's like, Jeff, are you kidding me? I'm sick today. I almost called in sick. I know, you should have told me I would have canceled it, man. I'm not that uh, hard ass. So uh, yeah, I'm not, not doing all that good with the, uh, the old internal thermostat, but it was fun to shoot these few. There's just a few of them. So uh, it was fun to shoot them for you and kind of come back uh, for a, a little bit of a web redemption. Yeah. Still, yeah. still not impressed, but I think it's the lot we got, and you know, it is our lot in line. Yeah. Anyway, we appreciate you guys stopping by, and if you're super bored, swing over by uh, OG's Danger Show. There's a couple definitely of go drills. by there, man. Yeah, there's a couple shooting drills, and I'm going to be putting up a a level 3A armor test here um, at the end of the weekend. So you guys nice. might like that. Thanks for stopping by, and we will see you on the next video.
Um, 